Um, I'm not gonna put a title on this quick word, quick message, because I don't know exactly what the Lord gonna have me to say. I do know that um, I'm literally sitting where he told me to just put the camera up and press live because this is what I was doing is sitting here and um, remove me father and add all of you please increase so that I may decrease be unto you the glory not unto me but unto you be all the glory amen okay the messages that the Lord gives me are never from my head or what I think I should say or what sounds good you better believe I get tested on everything he asked me to say. Either I'm going through it in a way that you can never imagine. You know, I think sometimes filming outside makes things look easy when they're not. It was never meant to be easy. And also, either I'm going through it, have been through it, or about to go through whatever he has me to talk about. And um, I'm here to tell you, that spiritual warfare and, and having to see things swirl around you that you can't control is real. And your your um, position on what you believe God to do for you, which is to give you strength and wisdom and to help you to have endurance to push through these uncontrollables is where the proof will be in the pudding. There's a scripture that says, and I'm always crossing my mind, and I try my best. I, I beg the Lord to let me not fall into the category of how he says, be better than the Pharisees, which put pressure or put things on people that they're not even doing. I'm here to tell you, I'm admitting that I know it is not easy to always say, I don't understand this, or I don't understand that. I don't understand this, and I don't understand that either. But I'm going to release all of my fear to you, God, and I'm just going to trust in you and know that you're going to show me the way. And when you ask him this now, it doesn't mean that he's just going to, and it's, he's going to, you know, he could, and he does a lot. He does this a lot, you know, just speak the word and whatever it is you're asking him for just is done. We thank you for that grace. We thank you, Lord. But oftentimes, he doesn't do it that way. He will walk you through the journey of you doing it yourself through what, in, in, through the way that he empowers you with his spirit and gives you the strength to get it done. Which means you must be willing to obey when he gives you the step. We can ask the Lord. Well, I guess I should have known if something was back there. The dogs would have let me know. Anyway, um, because dogs are right here. As I say that, she come and sit there. Mm. Um, help me, Jesus. I was just, I was, there is a scripture that says the Pharisees will put pressure on you with things that they will never even do themselves. And I'm telling you that I know what it feels like to really and truly got to release your mind and say, look, what did God say? And then you ask him, show me the way. The Bible says, lean not on your own understanding in the book of Proverbs chapter three, verses five through six. But in all things, acknowledge God and he shall direct your paths, which means he's never once said, figure it out. I gave you good mind, figure it out. He never said that. He says, lean not on your own understanding. He also says, come to me as a baby comes um, to their parents in need, meaning we know we need him. But what also he says is to obey is better than sacrifice. So we will ask God to help us, but then he'll give you a step and you overlook it or you just say, no, not now. But that's the part of getting it done that you asking him for. It's not easy sometimes because what he's asking you to do, he knows you can't do it effectively without him. So... Our job is to not only ask God to, our accountability is not just to ask God to help us, but to ask him to show us the way and give us strength to do what he calls us to do. That's the hard part. But it's not hard when you really wait on him to give you the strength and show you what to do. When he gives you the road map and he starts giving you, sometimes he don't give you the map, he gives you a step after step like he did Abraham. He didn't tell Abraham everything. 
he told Abraham one step. When Abraham did that one step, then he gave him step two. When he went to step two, then he gave him step three. That's a very difficult road to go on because um, you're walking blind, which is why Abraham was and is called in the Bible the father of faith because he did not know until he would get to where God would send him or do what God would tell him to do to know what's the next move. A lot of us, he's calling us to have that kind of faith because that kind of faith draws in huge huge hands movement from god the bigger your faith the more he can move because you're giving him the capacity to do it we talked about the power circuit before the um the fuse box that if it only can hold 10 percent amps or volts or whatever even though the power coming through it is unlimited it can only push out 10 10 no matter how much you beg or pray for if you only can hold 10 percent of god only 10 percent of god coming out but it's an unlimited wealth of god that wants to come through to you but you're only a, you're only going to get what you put in and put out meaning your faith now when you go through the test and the trials of going through the hard time and realizing that a lot of these things that we are dealing with is just to condition us although they're very uncomfortable you lose things you have to see things walk away you have to see people walk away and even your mindset walk away that you was relying on for a long time that ain't easy but it's in those things that you start to see that god is not going to leave you through during that process and then that's when your capacity to hold and to release or to have more of god come through you expands from 10 to whatever amount that you will allow yourself to have i don't want my percent of God to come through me to be the same every day. I pray for it to expand daily. But I know what I'm praying for. That means I know it's not going to be an easy road because there's a lot of times it comes through tests and trials and that ain't easy. Coming out of it, you be grateful and happy, but while you're in it, that depends on what type of faith you're going to have. If you're going to complain all of the time, then you're no different. We're no different than the Israelites who was mummering and always complaining in the wilderness. And thus, they kept missing the mark. They walked in circles for 40 years on a place that only took a few days to get to because they were complaining about everything on the journey. We don't realize we're doing it, but we are. Sometimes if you only have the capacity to eat rice and beans every day or peanut butter and jelly every day, or ramen noodles, ramen noodles, however you say it. Where I'm from, we say ramen. Y'all may say ramen, whatever. Then to complain about it every day means you're not grateful for the humbling of what God is doing in your life. We must pray for strength because a lot of the times we look at and read these Bible scriptures that they complain, oh, all we're going to eat is bread all day long. That's it. You're going to just give us bread, bread, bread. We're not going to have nothing else we can eat. And so he gave them quail and gave them um, other resources. But then he also punished them for complaining. It's the little things. You got to catch yourself. It's the little things because it's no different than them. That ain't easy. I'm here to tell you. You'll slip into complaining and mummering without even realizing it. I'm human just like you, so I get it. I said that all to say this, the Lord wants us to rely on him for everything we need, everything we are going to do, every place we're going to go. Get over here now. Adori, Bubby. Rely on him for all things because otherwise you're walking without a guide. In these days, you need a guide, not any guide, the guide. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus. Jesus spoke in the book of John chapter 14. He says, I will send down a send, the, the helper. I can't wait to read this to you. And then he says that, that I will give you strength and I will do these things and I will guide you. Well, he said the helper going to do these things. But then you start hearing him say, I will do, which means he is the helper. One in the same. Adori, a bubby. We need him for all things. And don't you dare think that you're by yourself going through a hard time. 
And don't think that God don't know you are going through the hard time. It's messages like this and others and, and scripture and, and, and just sheer revelation from God that wakes you up from the dark. Even if you're still in it. He never said he's going to pull you out right away. But he did say he will give you light. And when he give it to you, harness it. Hold it. Sit with him. I'm sitting in the dirt and in the grass. Because I needed a rejuvenation. Sit with him. And then once you're confident in knowing that you have heard from God or that you've gotten his strength or that you know you can get back up again, then you share it. Don't be quick to run with it until you harness it for yourself first. Because to pour out of an empty vessel is to pour into nothing. You must be filled up first. New oil, new wine, and new wine skin. And ask him to have you to not look back and, and, and to be and to be um crying over the old wine skin that you must let go. Wine skin meaning if you put new wine in old wine skin that leather will burst because the new wine is going to expand and it can't hold it you can't have new wine in the old wine skin so all of it got to go the old wine and the old wine skin you want new wine skin with new wine with new capacity so that way your fuse box can release more and receive first more of god and then release more you get it through the hard times but the hard time ain't meant to kill or hurt. It is to build. I have so many uncertainties in my life. I don't know how. I don't know how this. I don't know how that. I don't know how this. I don't know how that. I don't know how this. And I don't know how that. But I know who will. And I know who can. That's more important than how. Take the H and turn it around. Take that W put where the H is. How is much. Who is much more better than how. Who is Jesus? The blood of Jesus is all we need. Hard times is a part of the journey. I am not lying to you. It is not easy. So don't make me make you think it is. But it's worth it. I'm in this game with you. This game, I shouldn't say game. I'm on this journey with you. Because it ain't a game. It ain't about no games. This is real life here. People already live it in games. This is real life. We got this, not because of us, but because of the spirit of the living God within us. He that is in us is truly greater than he that is in the world. Got a little housework to do, so I need to get up. But I just want you to understand this. You are not alone, and God is with you. And you always remember this in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. He said, Have I not commanded you to fear thou not, and to me not dismayed? See, he's been asking us, fear thou not, fear thou not, fear thou not. But in Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, he went from him asking us to commanding us to not fear. That's a commandment. Book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. It is no longer, please don't fear, don't fear, don't fear. He says it so many times in the word. But in Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, he says, have I not commanded you to not fear? See, God is taking it serious because he knows what fear does. He's tired of seeing us always frazzled in our emotions. The only way you can let it go is to get rid of that fear. And how do you do it? Is to rely on the Holy Spirit to give you the abundance of courage and strength and boldness. And to remember that in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. See, I don't want it if it didn't come from God in the first place. That means it came from the devil. Why would you want it? For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Not a crazy, whacked out mind, sound mind. That's in the Bible. You got to know it by asking God to let it well up in you. Say the scripture, but mean it. It's not a, it's not a hocus pocus. You must mean it, and it does come to pass. God's word is living, and it's nothing to play with. I love you. Most importantly, the Lord loves us most. Keep going, bro.
Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up. Your family is needing you to keep it going. If you ain't have no kids, your, 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 your round, your people, your boys, your friends need you to make it so they can see it can be done or they will die. Most times people's dreams die because the one that's called to show them a different way of doing it give up too fast. You got people attached to you. Sis, who are you thinking gonna let you give up? Not me. And most certainly not the Lord. Get up with your courage. Even if your body is unable to get up. Sometimes you be so tired you can't get up. Let your spirit get up. Don't never let your spirit lay too long. Get up. Rise and shine as it says rise in the book of Isaiah chapter 61. Playtime over. We enjoy, we're going to enjoy our lives and have a great time in it. But playtime in spirit is over. Be firm on what we're saying. I am held accountable for everything I say here because the Lord makes sure I'm held accountable because I go through hell to do these videos and to mean it. I don't care about a like or a love on the video. This is real life here. If I can go through this, then you can go through this. Meaning life. I ain't no more special than you. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Stick to that. Have a beautiful day. And in closing, may the Lord bless thee and keep thee and make his face to shine upon thee and to be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace in the name of Jesus. Amen.